Now let's talk about some solvents. And there's some big differences between polar protic and polar aprotic. And they have very different reactivities and sometimes they can promote one kind of reaction over the other. And so we need to know what each is and what kind of category they fall into, under. So both of these are going to be polar molecules, but the protic ones are able to participate a lot easier in acid-base reactions. And so it's easy for a proton to come off of them and interact with other molecules. Polar aprotic is a polar molecule, but it doesn't have that proton that comes on and off. And these can be important because a lot of reactions are sensitive to a proton and it could ruin it if we had that proton come off. But we still need the polar um, solvent in order to get everything dissolved, just based on the intermolecular forces that we're expecting in the reaction. So with that, let's talk about the best polar protic solvent out there. Well, I think we can say with without too much argument that this is going to be water. That this is the solvent that it, it's it's for life. It's all kinds of other things. It's it's a very green solvent. So if you're capable of using water, uh, that's wonderful to do your reactions. There's a lot of reasons why you might not be able to use water, but this is a polar protic solvent, and it's it's great. Maybe not as much for a lot of organic reactions, but if we can, we'll use it. Now, here's ethanol, but really other alcohols um, would fall under this category. Such as uh, isopropyl alcohol or, you know, butanol, lots of different things. But alcohols are polar and they're protic. It's very similar to water, really, except we've attached some hydrocarbons onto it. Another protic solvent that sometimes gets used is acetic acid. And you might think, oh, that's vinegar. Well, we can actually get acetic acid that has no water with it. It's called glacial acetic acid and it smells horrible. Uh, but it's a, a nice solvent to use at times, but as you might guess, this can donate its proton because, you know, it's an acid. There are other carboxylic acids that you could use for solvents. Just in general, but acetic acid is the most common one that you'll see in there. And for all of these, you'll probably want them to be liquid or you'll be heating the reaction to very high temperatures. Uh, and speaking of heating reactions to very high temperatures, you can do a diethylene glycol or ethylene glycol, but I'll write the diethylene glycol just to show you, hey, that's a neat solvent. And you can even go triethylene glycol or however many of these units that you'd like. So here's diethylene glycol. And one of the reasons why you might want to use it is you can only heat a solvent up to its boiling point. And under normal atmospheric conditions, this boils at 244 degrees Celsius. So if your reaction's running pretty slow and you need a polar protic solvent uh, and, and your um, other stuff, that's the other reactants that are in your reaction can tolerate this high of a heat, uh, this is a way to get very high heat. So this is a polar protic. 
Now let's look at the aprotic ones. And a great one to use is dimethyl sulfoxide, which gets abbreviated DMSO. So there's two methyl groups, dimethyl, and then sulfoxide is this um, group right here in the middle. This is a great solvent. It will dissolve most things. And it also is able to dissolve quite a bit in water. And sometimes that's a useful feature. So that, that's a wonderful one. And there's no protons on here that can easily come off. And so this is a polar molecule, but there's no protons. So aprotic, polar aprotic. Another one that would fit in this category, it looks kind of similar, except we have uh, carbon here is acetone. And then uh, another great solvent is dimethyl form amide. So I'll just draw the structure out. So there's no protons here that can come off. This is slightly basic and is quite polar. So this is NN dimethyl form amide or just DMF. Um, so dimethyl form amide. Comes from like formic acid and then it's an amide. So it has this carbonyl with the nitrogen bond. That's where that name comes from. Uh, let's, there's a few more aprotic ones that are here. So dichloromethane, DCM, this one gets used fairly uh, frequently, especially when you're doing extractions because it's easy to boil off. It has a relatively low boiling point. Uh, there's also acetonitrile, So you've got a methyl here and then a cyanide group. So it's attached like that. This is acetonitrile. This gets used a lot in chromatography because of its optical properties, but also because it's polar and you can dissolve it in a lot of water and, and get a mixture there. But you can run reactions in this too. And then we also have the ether solvents like diethyl ether and tetrahydrofuran. So this is THF, tetrahydrofuran, and, and this is diethyl ether. These get used a lot in um, Grignard reactions and, and other similar things where they, you need to not have any water in them and they need to be a little bit polar in order for the reaction to, to work well. And you cannot have any protic for those kinds of reactions. And those kinds of reagents would interact with this polar group right here. And so those are kind of incompatible with those. And also sometimes with the halogenated things. So you're, there's reasons for doing um, these various solvents. It would attack acetonitrile as well. So that is the polar A protic. And there's some polar protic. There are more out there. Um, there's even some nitrogen-based things that we could use over here that would be somewhat protic, even though you think of them as a base, there are molecule, there are bases out there that will rip um, protons off of bases and, and other things. And so sometimes you have to be careful with those. So it's important to recognize these two broad categories for when we're dealing with organic reactions. Um, thank you for joining me, and we'll see you in the next video.